And we're back with more of the Pope on film. It's time, Bunny! It is time. It is time. God, mm. it is time. <laughs> yes, Bunny, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film podcast to sashay our way into the third and final part of our painfully long podcast. But this week it was worth it because uh, Ngagi is crazy. Uh, and it is said third part wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our uh, newly released 4K restored director's cut now with all new scenes and bonus features. Movie of the week! And this week we take a look at the utterly deep delightful 2022 British comedy Brian and Charles <laughs> Charles Petrescu <laughs> Bunny, I, I love this film I absolutely love it it's in my top 10 for the year I love it and I absolutely know why let me tell you why 2020. Uh, 2016. Uh, There's an election. And the worst person gets fewer votes, but this is America, so they became president. Yes. And so we're fighting this corruption and the fact that he has done so many crimes and hasn't been arrested uh, tells should tell everyone, especially me, that uh, police, crimes, jail, laws, they're just for people without money. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, because if laws were an actual thing that... Uh, that applied to everyone, including the ultra-rich, then Trump would have been put away forever ago. Yeah. So, uh, we're fighting this president. We're absolutely fighting corruption and fighting the government, and there's no laws. And, and then, a deadly pandemic happens, and people are dying left and right. And uh, we had the absolute worst president for that. Yes. Remember, oh, it's going to go away. It's a miracle. Remember, I am the chosen one. It's going to go away. We, we have we to stop to testing. Gone. We keep getting new cases because we're testing. So we're finding yeah. them. So we have to stop testing, and then there won't be no, no more new cases. And then all of these uh, right-wing conservative evangelicals are like, oh, things were better under Trump. And it's like, don't you remember when we were keeping, when we were stacking dead corpses in freezers? Yeah. And uh -huh. we were burying them in cardboard boxes in fields in mass graves because we didn't know what to do with these dead, disease-riddled bodies? Remember fighting a 90-year-old woman for for the last roll of toilet paper in the frickin' town? I I have I have made a a representation of this and I think it's time to show it. Okay. Are you pulling something up on the screen right now? Okay, I ask because number one, I'm high. Number two, I'm really high. And number three, uh, you get to watch this, I believe, as it's happening, but I have to watch it on the stream on the actual twitch.tv. So there's a, there's a lag. There's a delay. And so I guess I'm just going to have to say all of the lines to Edward's Plan 9 from Outer Space until this thing pops up on the screen. Greetings, you my friends. We are all interested. You be able to see it by now. Nope. 
Oh, okay. I was looking at the middle. Tell me it's oh, your no. picture. Okay, Jesus. It's been up here this whole freaking time. Okay, so... I'm not sure what I'm this, looking at. This is this sums up everything that you're talking about. It is Captain America with a dinosaur head on a squishy, stretchy cat. Okay, yeah, that's uh, pretty much what I thought. Yeah, there you go. That's America. Yes, that's America right now. Uh huh. And, and and just the hypocrisy. We have all been through so much in 2020 and 2021. It, we've we have been through it. People have died, and uh, it it, and now we're dealing with all this stuff. And and the the far right is like, how dare Biden allow this one Chinese spy balloon to float lazily over parts of the country? We need to. We need to prosecute him. We need to put him in front of a firing squad. This is the worst thing in the world. And then news comes out that uh, there were three Chinese spy balloons during the Trump administration, and he kept them all hidden. But it doesn't matter that uh, it happened three times under Trump. What matters is that it happened once under Biden, and Democrats are held to like the highest of standards. Meanwhile, you can just be a, a former reality TV show and alleged rapist and become president for Republicans. Yes. That it's like, oh, here is Barack Obama, and he is a senator, and he is a historian, and he was first in his class at law school, and he's a constitutional scholar. And they had to jump numerous hoops to be at the highest levels levels of academia to be a Democratic president. But then here's a Republican president. I own a baseball team. But you, but you, but you. Now watch me shoot this drive. Yeah. But it's you know it's okay that Trump did it three times and hit it from the public. What happened? Is, what's what's the problem is, is that it happened to Biden once. So we've been through all of this shit. And the last thing that I want to do is pay money to sit down in a theater and watch a three hour drama that's going to make me depressed. Yeah, I want to be entertained. I want to see something fun. And I, this movie is just sweet. And fun. It's like Cotton Candy, the movie. Yes. It's just, it's a warm frickin' blanket. It's a onesie. It's Linus's security blanket. It's a unicorn set of pajamas. This is a hot cup of tea in an afternoon, and you've got a book of poetry in front of you, and you've got nothing to do. <laughs> that is this movie. I freaking love this movie. It's a tight 90 minutes. It's cute. It's funny. It's got heart, and I love it. I, I, it's actually so bizarre, so uh, bizarrely paced, and such a bizarre plot and bizarre characters. It's so strange and odd. It's kind of astounding that this is not an A24 film. Oh, 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 oh to be sure, yes. Although I, I question how odd it really is or if a lot of its oddness has to do with it's, it's foreign. It's Welsh. It is Welsh. They filmed it in uh, Welshia. But is it any Welches. stranger... Is it any stranger than... Any small town story with strange offbeat characters. You know, it could be well, fucking I, Mayberry. Well, I do think that, like, m honestly, Brian and Charles and Marcel the Shell with Shoes on would be a real great double feature. Oh, yes. 
because they're just two quirky, fun, family-friendly comedies that. Although all... we we went directly from this to a movie I recently got but had never seen, Reuben and Ed, and that also made a good double feature. Nice, Reuben and Ed. Is it about the making of the sandwich? Uh, no, it is. Crispin Glover and Howard Hessman. Howard Hessman, as in head of the class, Howard Hessman? In, in, a, in a road trip buddy comedy. Oh. You know what I want to see? I want to see 10 Speed in Brown Shoe. The Jeff Goldblum show? It was Jeff Goldblum and the guy from Pippin. What's his name? Ben Vereen. Join us. Yes, Ben Vereen. Freaking love Ben Vereen. Ah, I love Ben Vereen. He is so handsome. I have been on estrogen since the beginning of summer 2022, and it is fascinating to see me out and to see me about because my my I am changing. I'm finding out who I am, and my emotions are changing. My my mind is changing. I I have a trans son, and literally. Like every molecule within our body is changing, and uh, so yeah. I was uh, out and about doing a delivery. I have a delivery job, and I am yeah, I'm like Fry, Fry, Philip J. Fry. There you go. I, and I, I'm doing a delivery, and I'm delivering it. And as I get out of my car, a car pulls in, and it's the guy who owns the house. And he gets out of the car, and he said, Hey, you got my order there. Can I help you with the stuff out of the car, ma'am? And I say, Sure. He is like six foot five black man with a chiseled jaw. And huge muscles, and he had a tattooed sleeve. And for the first time in my life, I just went, Hello, nurse. <laughs> Hello. And like, I think I tried to flirt. Yeah. I'm not good. That's what I've learned. <laughs> but like, oh man, this guy. Uh, is it wrong that I want him to pick me up? Just hold me in his big muscular arms. No. Man. Dude was hot. So that leads us back to Brian and Charles. <laughs> well, well, you're leaving out the most important part here. How did he tip? Uh, he tipped me pretty good, actually. He okay. tipped me pretty good. All right. Yeah. And I'm I live in a small town, so there's a good chance that I might deliver it to him again. Wink wink. <laughs> I don't know what that wink was, but I know where his house is now. And now I drive past it and it's like That's the house. That's the house right there. That's the house. <laughs> so that's exciting. It's exciting to see the changes. Funny, what are your thoughts on this movie? Very sweet, very, very subtle, dry comedy, which uh, caused me a bit of a problem with the drugs. Because when I okay. started watching this movie, I was hyper-focused, and I was getting all of the weird little jokes, or the weird little things that happened. Like, there was this one part where uh, I think he ba he basically just finished building Charles and he was showing him off. And yeah. for a second, the way he was in the shot, the cameraman didn't know who the fuck to focus on, to focus on him or focus on the robot in the back. And like... You got deep. You could, you could see the indecision in the goddamn focusing. And yeah. it made me laugh. <laughs> Wow, so you were just blasted on your mind. You were looking at the fine print. And there was a lot of little shit like that, just subtle little shit throughout the whole thing that was just hysterical. 
and then the high itself st started to change, and I wasn't picking up nearly as much on the drier humor. Yeah. But I knew it was still there. I just have to find it again. I, I like the little things. Like, he he's checking Charles because he's not working, and he pulls out a big glowing disc go ball. Huh, the spleen works. I just love that. I just yeah. love the little the little things. I what would you what I find really interesting about this movie is why do we care so much? <gasps> what what makes us care? It's a box. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a box. With a humanish head on it that speaks without tone or emotion. But well, we feel for it when the well, we fucking family takes do. It away. But the, but I find it really interesting. Like why the, the, it doesn't seem to really be anything there. Yep. To make a connection with. Yeah. Yeah. But there is because so, you so feel for it, Charles. Is it just this puberty story that is like so ingrained on us because <clears throat> we all fucking had to live it? It it does feel it does give me a lot of uh parent vibes. So I have five kids, so I know what it's like to like a, the doorbell rings. Shh, don't make a noise. But you can't tell a kid don't make a noise. Yeah. Ah, uh, this movie. Oh, it the was character... definitely a father and son movie. Yeah, or a father and a, 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 a genderless being. Yeah. <gasps> I mean, because there's no reason to believe it's male. It, it it was again. It was emotionless. So there's no reason to believe it's either male or female. Yeah. And that's actually kind of a curious question now. I, I, I perceive a male. What do you think? Uh, I perceive a washing machine. Yeah. And uh, I don't know how to check if a washing machine has a dick. Uh, well, those are, those are cute, <laughs> clearly male legs. Yes, but also he does dress up as a woman. He comes out, and I like that. He, yeah. he wants to look pretty. True. I think I look pretty cool. I love that. Well, that's that's what I mean. I mean, it's you know, it's it's, it's genderless. Yeah. What would you consider? But it's cause, not. Uh, we we put a personality uh -huh. on it, and we and we care and we feel for it. Yeah. I, not a lot of people have seen Brian and Charles. What would you say is the plot of this film? And the conflict? I think I think it's a it's a basic single single male raises a child story, and the conflict is the idiot in town. You know what I there's only one problem that I had about this movie and that would be there's no tortadillos. No tortadillos. No tortadillos. Where are all the tortadillos? Uh, if you don't if you don't know what that meant, then you, that's why you should listen to the whole thing or watch us stream on Twitch right. because historic approximations. It's milk and eggs, bitch. That's right. This movie I it's cheap. It did not make a lot at the box office, but it's done so earnestly, I guess is how I would say it. The characters are so genuine and the characterizations are good that during the end credits, and if you haven't seen it, this is true, a robot raps. But instead of being embarrassing or cringe or ugh, a, a, a robot is rapping. 
Um, it's sweet and funny, and I dig it. And and yeah, you find yourself rooting for a crappy robot. That's pretty astounding. Yeah. Yeah. That's why this is such a good movie. And Brian has this positivity in this that's admirable because, like, you are happy. It's difficult to be happy and optimistic even when you know your life sucks and you're in a shitty situation. Yeah. But Brian has that. Yeah. in droves and it's admirable and I love Charles Petrescu Petrescu I was legitimately worried the first time that I saw the British that I saw this and Charles was taken away by the characters who are I would say essentially the British version the British equivalent to O'Doyle rules or the creepy family from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. The hills have eyes. Yeah. But a village. Yeah. Are the Poils in It's Always Sunny? I don't know. But I found myself worried and scared and emotionally invested in a shitty fake robot with a washing machine for a body. Yeah. Yeah. It's a cute, adorable, fun film. Well, I, I really wonder if it's because, I mean, it, it, it's just the story uh, of the growth of a child going yeah. through all the normal stages of childhood, and maybe that is where we're identifying. Maybe. Because we all know that story, and we all know it from a a, a very, very emotional place. I'm getting the uh, the magic hour sunset happening right here, yeah. and it's I'm looking great. <laughs> I this square over here on this side, on this side, this is where all the all the hotness is happening. <laughs> so every year. At the end of the year, I make a list of my 10 favorite movies of the year. Because in 2019, I started watching three movies a week, so I saw everything. So I started keeping a list of the movies that I like the most and changing it throughout the year. And I work really hard every year to make this list of my favorite movies of the year. And I loved Brian and Charles so much that I believe it got all the way to either number two or number three. I watched it pretty early in the year, and then it got bumped around a little bit. This is one of those movies that I said when we did, when we did everything everywhere all at once, I said that there were a handful of movies that could have easily been one of my favorite movies of the year if it hadn't been for everything everywhere all at once and Joe Butapaki. Yeah. Marcel the Shell with Shoes On would have been a a top contender were it not for Marcel the show which, were it not for everything everywhere uh, Glass Onion they made a Weird Al Yankovic movie starring Harry Potter where Weird Al Yankovic kills a bunch of drug kin kingpins yes that is amazing yes and that would have been number one but Frickin' Joe Butapaki came and, and just took it. And now there's a good chance it might win in the Oscars. Dude, the Oscars this year are going to be my freaking Super Bowl. Ten Super Bowls. Can't wait. There's a good <laughs> chance. That freaking short round data from Goonies might walk away with an Oscar yes. for acting. I, oh, I am. So pumped up about that. But uh, this movie ended up at the end of the year. Uh, Brian and Charles was my number five favorite movie of the year. Right after Weird, the Al Yankovic story. And right before The Menu, which is such a good movie. Is it? I really like The Menu. And then my brother texted me like a couple of weeks ago. I may have already mentioned this. My older brother texted me. 
have you seen this movie? I just saw it. It's called The Menu. It's really good. And it's like, I already saw that. You're not allowed to like my movie. This is mine. <laughs> What's next? You're going to be walking around like Charles Petrescu? <laughs> not allowed. This movie is mine. Okay. So here are some stats. This is a 2022 British film. It started off as a short film. Now, the guy who stars in Brian and Charles, Brian, that's uh, uh, he's a British actor and comedian named Chris Hayward. He pops up in a lot of Ricky Gervais stuff. Yeah. He was in Extras. He had a small part in that. He had a bigger part in Derek, which I never saw. Uh, there was a period in time where every time I went on Netflix, they're like, are you ready to see Derek? No, I'm not. Stop it. I'm not watching Derek. I don't know what this is, but I'm not watching it. I've also never watched uh, Trailer Park Boys. It's another one. No. That they always try and get me to watch. It's like, no, not at all. Um, you know what? Huh? Good, yeah. Netflix is going to lose our business. I heard that Netflix got bullied into reversing its decisions, that people, uh, they Sonic the Hedgehog to them. They fucking better have. I saw that, they I think, on Twitter right before. Yeah. And their stocks are going to fucking tumble yeah. if, they keep up, if they go with that. Because right now, Netflix only exists as a repository Especially for Gilmore Girls, and I think you should leave. Especially and Saturday morning all-star hits. Considering that they continue raise their prices. They keep raising their prices, yeah. All the time. And now I hear that they're adding commercials. Yep. Like, what the fuck is that? And you're releasing shit weekly? So what is, this is just TV. I'm yep. not gonna pay for TV. Fuck you, Netflix. Hey, and remember. you not even gonna let me share it? It's, uh, it's Video Killed the Radio Star. Remember when we said, hey, we need to get rid of cable. Streaming, you can have whatever you want, but now streaming is just TV. It is. Yeah. Streaming is just cable. It's just TV, and I'm yeah. paying for it, and I'm not going to do that. Yeah. It's the same thing. Exact same thing. I have a good pirate right here. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, uh, Chris Hayward made a short film, and then a British director oh, named Tim Jim Warren, Archer. By the way, I'm not sure when that popped up, though. Oh, hey, look at that. Yeah, I just saw it. Okay, uh, we're almost done. We're good. Uh, Jim, then a British director named Jim Arthur, who directed a bunch of British films I've never heard of that are real British-y. Uh, don't you come round and round to Rewo. <laughs> uh, he set out to make a feature film version of the short film of Chris Hayward's, and it was all set to start filming in and around April of 2020. I foresee no problem. So, yeah, so the making of the movie got postponed and the director was worried that his strange robot comedy would get canceled because, like, if there's a deadly pandemic, like, then your, your number one priority is not going to be, we got to make sure that the bad-looking robot with a washing machine for a body gets made. <laughs> uh... But it started filming at the end of 2020, so this was still pandemic -y times. It, it started filming in, like, October of 2020, so it, it, it was filmed in the thick of it. Uh, and boom, there you go. A lot of people don't even know this movie exists. It made a wee bit less than a million dollars at the box office. Really? Worldwide. Yeah. I was considering driving, like, an hour and 15 minutes to go see it uh, at a movie theater uh, way off in downtown Oklahoma City, but um, I just didn't want to drive that far. Yeah, and so uh, it, I waited until the exact second it was available as something that I could download legally, and I did. And great movie, wonderful movie. It's just so much fun. This wasn't a hit, but if you want to see a fun, light, quirky British comedy, just boom, Brian and Charles is adorable. It is freaking adorable. Yes, I agree. He Love was very adorable. Want to say yeah. anything? I love it. <laughs> I loved it. 
I love this movie so much. Yeah. Okay. So if you think Brian and Charles is cute, just wait till next episode. <gasps> so uh, next week, it's actually two weeks from now, but next week, um, we were going to do this made for TV post apocalyptic drama that's supposed to actually be scary and that many people when it first came out were scarred by it but no fuck that I found an extremely low budget crappy 80s horror film and it's one of those beautiful grindhouse films where let me tell you the plot of the film oh wait it is all in the title. I don't have to go into the minutia of Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Okay. I don't have to go into the minutia of uh, the Rhapsody Street Kids believe in Santa Claus. Oh. <laughs> it's all right there. Uh, get ready for this. Next week, flesh eating mothers. Flesh eating mothers. Flesh eating mothers. They're getting their children ready for dinner. I, you, you have my attention. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 Thank you, Django. So what was, the, what was the movie you were going to do? I don't know. It's called something like in the year 2889 or something like that. I don't remember. I put it on our shared copy. Yeah, I downloaded but then, it. I've, I've... Go ahead. Yeah, I, I, we were going to do that, but when you, when you find a movie called Flesh Eating Mothers, you got to do Flesh Eating Mothers. you got to do Flesh Eating Mothers, most, most sure. Okay, so let me tell you the, a, a bit about the plot of flesh-eating mothers. Okay. There's this one horny dude in the small American, all-American town, and he's banging all the slutty moms. But then a disease happened. All of the slutty chicks who banged this one dude at the bar become cannibals and start eating their children. Okay. I don't know who stars in it. I'm assuming uh, Sir John Gielgud, Jack Nicholson, and uh, possibly uh, Jesus Christ himself. Nice. Uh, and I don't know who wrote the script. I'm I assuming thinking, it's based on a work of Shakespeare. I am thinking we would be extremely lucky if we got Linnea Quigley. But I strictly, highly doubt it. I saw the trailer. There is no way they can afford that name. <laughs> In 1988. I wouldn't be surprised if they filmed it directly to a VHS tape. I am so excited. Next episode. Flesh eating mothers. Oh, this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. Even if it's bad, it's going to be fun. It's flesh eating mothers. Yes. So excited to do this. So that's next week. But now that I'm looking back at this week, oh, wow. Okay. Uh, Charles Petrescu, Selig the Conqueror in Goggy for Pete's sake. King Kong's bastard stepfather. I'm the inventor of Peeps. Uh, menacing wild turkeys led by Kevin Sorbo. Uh, yes. This has been pretty long. I see the time. Right, right, right down here, actually. Right down here. Hello! I see you time on Twitch. Uh, Robin, can you not be a whiny dog right now? You're ruining the podcast! Uh, now that I'm looking back at this episode, I gotta say, this has been... This has been a pretty darn good episode of the podcast. This has been a damn good episode. Okay, good. With, See, with I, an award-winning hap. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I 
thought the same thing, but I feel like you're the person who makes that decision, not me, and I didn't want to step on any toes. But yes, I concur with your assessment. Good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am May Lynn, and on behalf of uh, uh, who has been on the show with me today, on behalf of my wife, Natasha, and uh, my kids, Mal, Eleanor, Maxwell, I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And do specials and poopy tips. Thank you, Maxwell. You everyone named Brian. And you mm -hmm. everyone named Brian. And everybody who likes donuts. <laughs> and everyone who likes donuts. Okay. Do 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 Skitty Papa do wow cut and print and print on a cookie. Yes, I wasn't too high to do the podcast. You what?